Hey everyone, here's what's coming up tonight on New Center Now. It's something so many of you are talking about today and since last night, the last 24 hours really. Asylum seekers arriving in Maine. We have new information late breaking from the city and they're expecting even more in the coming days. And we'll hear from a reporter who's been covering the asylum story from San Antonio, Texas. That's where the asylum seekers are first entering the U.S. And we're going to hear why they wanted to come to Portland. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Lindsay Mills. And I'm Lee Nelson. Nearly 100 asylum seekers have already arrived in Maine's largest city in the last three days, and Portland city leaders have been told to expect as many as 150 more in the coming days. City leaders providing an update late this afternoon. Portland City Manager John Jennings says he learned Monday morning that 39 asylum seekers had arrived in Portland. Three days later, we've had 96 individuals arrive since Sunday. He says at least 150 more are headed to Portland on buses from San Antonio, Texas. I do believe that there will be more and potentially many more. Children are among the many traveling to Portland from the Democratic Republic of Congo and Angola. City leaders taking emergency action, opening the Portland Expo Center as a shelter with 350 cops arriving late Wednesday from the Maine Emergency Management Agency. The Preble Street Homeless Shelter providing meals for at least the night and next morning and Maine Medical Center donating linens. Hundreds are sounding off on social media. Carrie writes, Portland is already struggling with homelessness, yet we open our doors for others. And Kimberly writes, welcome asylum seekers. We are glad you're here and safe. We should not see these people as a liability. Claude Rwanje moved from Maine to Congo more than two decades ago. Instead, we should see them as an asset. We have an aging state. I sit on the board of the chamber, and I know that every day when we meet, we hear people talking about the needs for workers. Rwanje founded a nonprofit that helps refugees, asylum seekers, and other new Mainers learn how to find and finance anything from school to housing. The surge of asylum seekers is raising questions about funding. We're trying to obviously lessen the impact on the, on the city budget, but this is an emergency situation. Now city leaders say they have reached out to surrounding municipalities for help and so far city manager John Jennings says he's only heard back from South Portland. The governor will be in town Friday to talk more with city leaders about what resources the state may be able to provide. So more on this this week family after family has been herded onto a bus and shipped out of San Antonio, Texas. We're told 39 families are going to other cities around the US and 34 families are headed or are already in Portland. So that is nearly half of all these recent arrivals headed right to here. This morning I spoke with Jaliza Isereri, who is a reporter at our sister station in San Antonio, where the asylum seekers first entered the U.S., and I asked her why Portland. Yes, it appears that in the translation process, Portland, Maine was their final destination. That's where they wanted to go. Um, and from what city leaders told me, it's because they were planning on meeting up with other asylum seekers there. I'm not sure what the Congolese population is like in Portland, Maine, but it sounds like they knew people in that area and they wanted to be somewhere where they know people and that they could feel comfortable. Now, first, to answer that part of the question, there are, according to uh, Mayor Ethan Strimling of Portland, about a thousand Congolese people living in Maine, though he wasn't quite sure how many actually lived in the city of Portland. Now, the people from the Congo and Angola speak French, and Jaleesa, the reporter, didn't know if Maine's French-speaking population had anything to do with Maine being such a popular destination for them. But she did say they almost got sent to Portland, Oregon, until the translators in Texas realized they were talking about Portland, Maine. And you can check out the full interview with Jaleesa Isereri on our website and mobile app as well. 
Now this, just about an hour ago, Governor Janet Mills announced she will sign the bill to legalize physician-assisted suicide. Also known as the Death with Dignity Bill, the bill was passed very narrowly in both chambers of the legislature, and it's been sitting on the governor's desk for several days. Initially, she had said she was unsure if she would sign, but today she said she would. The law will allow terminal patients with less than six months to live to request a deadly dose of medication. The patients would also need to get a second opinion and make three separate requests for those drugs, two of them oral and one written. In announcing her decision today, Governor Mills also said she's adding more protections to the law by executive order to make sure it is not abused. And we've got more news coming your way, obviously, but we got to talk about the weather, too. What an amazing day it was. Mm -hmm. Keith said maybe the best day so far this year. Keith? Yeah, I think, you know, depending on what happens this year, this is like a top 10 day because it's 73 and totally sunny. Awesome. I mean, that's, it's, hard, it's hard to beat. And this is actually a satellite loop from this morning to now. And I, I did it purposefully because <laughs> there's nothing happening. There's just no clouds anywhere around. You just don't see that much in June. It's more of a... A late fall thing where sometimes you get those blue skies all the way through. Temperatures right now have cooled a little bit along the coastline to the upper 60s, but they're right at that kind of perfect range in Lewiston, Augusta, Bangor, Millinocket. Very consistent there at 75 in all of those cities. But it's Maine, so we're not going to even try to to replicate this again tomorrow. We've got a storm system here, another one here. They're going to come together just off the coastline. And if this was a snowfall forecast, it would make me a little nervous. There's a lot of moisture with this system, most of which will be offshore, but some of it will hit the coastline. So the rest of tonight obviously is fine. It's clear. Temperatures drop to the upper 40s and low 50s. We start tomorrow morning just with partly cloudy conditions. And by uh, 11 or 1, depending on your location here, the rain starts to move in. Once it moves in, it's pretty heavy through the afternoon along the coast with the downpours coming through 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 o'clock and not getting out of here really until around midnight. After that, Friday looks a little bit unsettled, but not nearly as rainy as Thursday night. So guys, we could be looking about an inch plus of rain there, but the weekend overall is looking pretty good. We'll talk about that, of course, in just a few. All right, Keith, thanks. Checking out some headlines now. The jury in the John Williams murder trial got to see the video of Williams interview with state police not long after he was captured in the woods following a four day manhunt. Williams is accused of shooting and killing Corporal Eugene Cole, a Somerset County Sheriff's deputy in April of last year. Several forensic scientists from the Maine State Crime Lab testified about finding Williams DNA on a water bottle found inside Corporal Cole's truck on the steering wheel and the grip of a gun police found at the cabin Williams was staying at before he was caught. If Williams is convicted of murder, he could face life in prison. And we have a quick update on David Ortiz as well. Prosecutors in the Dominican Republic say witnesses and security camera footage show the attempt to kill former uh, Red Sox star David Ortiz was carried out by two men on a motorcycle and two other groups of people in cars. And they say that indicates a new level of sophistication in the attack. Five people have been detained so far. In a court document, Dominican prosecutors said one of the shooting suspects, Oliver Acosta, was driving a gray Hyundai Accent before he then jumped on the back of a motorcycle driven by Eddie Garcia. Meantime, Big Poppy, uh, his wife says he was able to sit up and take a few more steps as he continues to recover at Mass General Hospital in Boston. A lot of people thinking of him. Absolutely. All right. Coming up, surprising number of adults say they weren't taught basic money lessons by their parents. We're going to look at the numbers. And tonight, Game 7, Hannah Deneen is here to give us a preview of what she and Jess Gagne have in store later in the show. Hey guys, it doesn't get bigger or better than this in the sport of hockey. It is game seven of the Stanley Cup final. Someone is taking the cup home tonight. We're live at FanFest and coming up, we're going to tell you about the main company that's represented here. In a new survey conducted by CreditCard.com, a quarter of adults say they never learned basic money lessons from their parents. Yeah, and the vast majority of people who did receive some lessons about this say they were taught first about savings, first and foremost. Now, the report finds that sons were more likely to learn about investing from their parents. The daughters were more likely to learn about giving. Hmm. 
Analysts say the money lessons you teach your children today will follow them through the rest of their lives. And by now you've probably heard this a million times, but here's a million and one. Every dollar you save for retirement in your 20s could be worth $15 or more by the time you reach your golden years. So save, save, save. Now to a major recall from the Ford Motor Company. It's because of a suspension and transmission problem. Ford recalling more than 1 million Ford Explorers from model years 2011 through 2017. I know I see a lot of these on the road. Mm. The issue involves software problems with its rear suspension and transmission controls. If that's not fixed, it could potentially limit steering control. So far, Ford says it hasn't heard of any injuries reported because of this problem. And while they're at it, Ford is also recalling 125,000 F-150 pickups model year 2013 with 5 liter and 6.2 liter gas engines. These pickups are being recalled for a second time also due to a transmission problem. All right, another quick break, then we're going to head to Boston to get you ready for Game 7 between the Bees and the Blues. And Keith's getting us ready for his forecast. That's coming up next. <laughs> All right, so the Stanley Cup comes down to win or go home. Ooh. Game 7, Bruins and Blues battling tonight. The game is, is right here, too, which is good. Very exciting. If that doesn't get you pumped up, maybe Jess and Hannah will get you pumped I up. Know there they will. in Boston where we can feel <laughs> the energy from here, guys, for the big game. We'll start with Jess. Jess, how are fans in Maine getting ready for this game seven? Lee and Lindsay, it does kind of feel like a holiday, doesn't it? So much buzz. Game seven. Someone is walking away with the Stanley Cup tonight, and obviously fans here hope it will be the Boston Bruins. And that extends to throughout New England. Fans in Maine also getting in on the fun. And check this out. A classroom in Auburn sprouted something awesome overnight. Playoff beers. <laughs> Kids in Mr. Brian Gagnon's music class at Fairview Elementary School made special beers to wear around school today to hype up their fellow classmates. They also rehearsed some songs like We Will Rock You and Let's Go Bruins. Mr. Gagnon also had a beard on, but his is not fake. He's been rocking the beard since the playoffs began in April. He says his good luck beard worked for the Bruins back in 2011, and he's hoping it'll work again this year. And he's also using the opportunity to raise money for the Dempsey Center and the Dempsey Challenge, a cause that is very near and dear to his heart. I lost my dad in 2009 and uh, you know the Dempsey Challenge just was one of those, the Dempsey Center was one of those things that I actually never used the resources myself but uh, they asked my uh, Camp of Rock kids to play there one year in 2011 and ever since then uh, Camp of Rock has played at the Dempsey Challenge and we've always had a great time there so we'd They're like to give back to the center, community. Yeah. The best part is that if the Bruins win, the students get to decide what shape Mr. Gagnon is going to shave his beard into. And while I was there, I heard a lot of Fu Man chews thrown around. So I guess we'll have to check in with him after the game. But first, let's check in with Hannah Deneen, who's outside at FanFest with the throngs of fans. Hey, Hannah. Hey, Jess. Yeah, I'm at FanFest on Canal Street right outside of the garden. And it's electric. They've got the music going. All the fans are decked out in their black and gold, and they're rowdy. I mean, there's a couple fans here, too, that have their blue on, but they are getting some passionate boos directed their way. And what else is really neat about FanFest is that they, there is a main company that's being represented here, Giffords. For the past two years, Giffords has been... Ah, uh, I hate when that happens. Darn it, me too. Live television. You know, sometimes even in li life <laughs> can happen good. too. You scared our control. I know, <laughs> I'm sure I did. So we want to want to tell you what um, she was going to tell us about yeah, though yeah, this yeah. partnership she was talking about uh, by the existence of the ever popular Power Play Fudge, as described on the Giffords website. It is a crushed chocolate cookie. Um, in a bit of golden vanilla ice cream full of fudge-filled chocolate pucks Yum. crossed with a milk fudge ribbon. And uh, the partnership between Giffords and uh, the Boston Bruins is extra special because the Gifford family really loves their hockey.
there's several of us within the family that are huge hockey fans, several of us, or at least myself, um, I'm a hockey father as well now. And it's just something that we enjoy. It's a passion. And it's been a great thing for Gifford to be able to kind of connect with fans as well and sharing with them our passion for the team. And people are really passionate about this flavor. Power Play Fudge recently became Gifford's top selling ice cream flavor in all of New England. Sounds delicious. Yes, I it think does. I know where I'm going to have for dinner tonight. <laughs> All right, uh, and yeah, Hannah actually is going to talk a little bit at 5.30 about something savory. So we got the sweet okay, we got the teeth sweet, covered, we got, and we now we got the savory. Got the savory. Just so. gotta get that shot. When everybody uh, yeah. uses their cell phones, this is what happens sometimes to those live shots. That's exactly oh, yeah, yeah. what I was yeah. thinking. Yeah. I, know. See, I, I thought you were gonna say we got the sweet, and now we have the sour. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Deeply offended, <laughs> as usual. He loves it. Uh, Today was a great day. Yeah, it sure Beautiful. was. Good. And actually, a, a nice night for hockey. Even though it's inside, it's nicer when you, you know, <laughs> yeah. you're not uh, standing out there in the rain getting there. Uh, visible satellite is clean. It was from start to finish. And we really had almost no cloud cover anywhere in the state of Maine today. And you don't say that all too often. Temperatures for highs, 76 in Sanford, 78 in Freiburg. Most of us around uh, 73 to 75 degrees, though which was pretty much perfect. And the dew points were extremely, and are extremely low in the low 40s to mid 40s. So it's really, really dry out there. You know, not that 76 is ever really hot, but if you get that with the dew point around 70, it, it gets close to it. It's very, very warm. But when it's like this and it's dry, it's much more comfortable. All right, our next storm system is a one, two connection. And as I mentioned before, if this were during the winter, this kind of storm would make me nervous because it's got potential, but most of that will be offshore with this coastal low. The good news is when you're forecasting rain, people tend to be a little bit more forgiving than snowfall amounts. So uh, we'll talk about rain amounts here in just a second. Rest of this afternoon and tonight is uh, pleasant. Temperatures drop into the 50s and some 40s. Tomorrow morning, we're gonna start partly cloudy in most spots, but Southern Maine will be probably cloudy to start with. And then here comes the rain coming in around noon and then moving up the coastline through the afternoon. A couple of heavy downpours in there. Those will continue through uh, early evening evening on Thursday and again some uh, really good downpours in there maybe some uh, lightning here and there although most of it's not convective and then Thursday night we start to clear out a bit and Friday's an in-between day we're basically trying to get this trough in Canada to the coastline and so there'll be a couple of showers around on Friday afternoon but also some periods of sunshine Saturday looks good and then Sunday, a couple of showers for Father's Day. Total rainfall amounts, which we just flashed right by that, around an inch or so along the coastline. So uh, again, the weekend is split. I think Saturday is much nicer than Sunday. Sunday's not terrible, but there'll be some scattered showers around. Looks good on Monday. Thunderstorms, maybe strong ones on Tuesday and then partly cloudy on Wednesday. Coastal temperatures, upper 70s, could be mid 80s though inland. So it'll be uh, relatively mm. mild away from the ocean. Yeah. Edging toward hot. Edging toward mm -hmm. hot, which we determine is 84 degrees. Right. 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 That's Sweating. the official hot yeah. Sweating. turnover. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks, All right. Keith. Thanks, Keith. <laughs> hey, we're a long way from football season, but something is going on right now in Waterville, and it's getting people in the spirit with the help of a very special guest. Yeah, new center Sean Stackhouse joins us now from the Alphon Youth and Community Center there. And Sean, sadly, you might not be that special guest. We think you're pretty special. <laughs> But we have a feeling Patriots fans are, are going to be really pumped when they hear who that person is today. Liam Lindsay, I don't know if you can see the massive human in the David Posternock jersey behind me, but it's Rob Gronkowski, another and the former oh, Patriots yeah, we tight end, one of the greatest of all time. He found his way right yeah, here today. We are here at the Alphon Youth and Community Center, where later tonight they have a fundraising dinner. But today, Gronk is taking the time to spend the afternoon with some local kids in the area. He's been doing a lot with them, so he's been running some drills. He's been teaching plays, but most importantly, he's been teaching that Gronk spike. No one does it better, but I'm going to have my reporter, Jackie Mundry, throw me a touchdown pass right here, and I'm going to give it my best shot. We'll see what I have. I don't think it's going to be that good. Yeah, not that great, but at least I gave it a shot. All these kids are even better than I am. 
No one can do it better than Gronk, of course. And Lee Lucci, I think that I would really like to see both of you give it a shot. <laughs> How's it work for you? I'll send it back. <laughs> happy to do it. No footballs around right now, but I think happy it's to good do it. Tension relief, like you yeah. know, if you're angry about something, you could Gronk. Like I could Gronk spike the prompter controller. <laughs> you, you, you know, know what? You should. <laughs> You should do that. <laughs> so many of you ask me what this is. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Now yeah. I have a, there's a do it chant going on I, in the uh, newsroom. <laughs> do it is right. All right, hey, let's talk to Cindy, see what's coming up in the next half hour. Hi, Cindy. Hey, guys. This past weekend, there was a big fire at an old mill building. It was actually under renovations to become a museum, and some of the relics were already inside. We're going to take a look at the damage and tell you what can be salvaged. And imagine a world with flying taxis. We actually may not be too far from this. Uber is trying to make it a reality. Those stories and more, all ahead at 5.30, back to you. Wow, that, sounds that thing awesome. looks really cool. Right? Just go up and over the traffic, no sweat. Sounds good to me. We can make it to the Stanley Cup final in an hour. True, <laughs> yeah, not a lot of traffic in Maine. Probably tonight headed south, there is some. Yeah, just yeah. a bit. All right, we're back with Braindrops after this. Cue the message in a bottle song, except this is the main version because this message was found in an Allen's coffee brandy bottle, no less. Thank you so much, Sonia, for sending this in in Machias Port. Most of the messages you get from Allen's coffee brandy, are <laughs> <laughs> you can't read on TV <laughs> no. usually. Okay, um, <sighs> today's brain drops is a is a picture, but it's uh, got a story behind it. It is uh, a. Um, so this is called an anvil cloud with mm -hmm. a thunderstorm. There was a really cool one in Amarillo the other night. And see how that flattens out at the top? So to weather weenies, this stuff is like gold. Like I've seen just a few of these of this caliber in the Northeast. So they're pretty rare here. They happen a lot more down south. So let's talk a little bit about what's going on here. Let me roll this on. Um, so the way that they get these classic anvil tops, these thunderstorms, is you start heating the ground, right, and you, you're raising the air up and up and up because it is less dense than the surrounding air. And that's how the cloud grows tall, these thunderstorms. But eventually, it reaches a point near the stratosphere where it is no longer more buoyant than the air around it. And so it flattens out. And that happens all at once. So it hits a ceiling, essentially. The air cools, condenses, and this cloud forms right at the top of where the stratosphere meets the uh, troposphere. So basically, it's the cap of the storm. Now, really, really nasty thunderstorms that sometimes happen in the plains will have what's called an overshooting top, which means this air is rising so violently that it pops the top huh? of the, the cap and there's a little cloud on top of it. And when you see that, it usually means it's super gnarly. And there's a picture yeah. of an overshooting top taken from space. Um, they do not really happen here. But whenever you see a thunderstorm like that with the anvil, that's because it's a thunderstorm underneath it and it's run into the top of the atmosphere. Very interesting. The more you know, New Center Main at 530 starts right now.